Okay, so today I want to talk about being tested for the coronavirus. So essentially, I was sick for probably two weeks from while I was at my current, or not my current, but my past job. And so I had a lot of the symptoms and what it basically just ended up being was a lung infection. However, um, what happened was I got all the symptoms. I called into work. They're like, okay, well, you know, you got to go get tested. So I did. They uh, tested me with the Q-tip, essentially down the nose or to the back of the nose. And what I thought was interesting about that was that one, it burned like nobody's business. I, he might have well as maced me or something because it hurt that bad. But um, what I also found interesting is the paperwork that they gave me. So the, the, the thing is, is I go in, I try to get seen. Then not only does work want me to get tested, but then they don't like the, the symptoms that I have is very similar. So they're like, okay, go wait in your car. And then we're going to have you tested because your symptoms are so similar. So the first doctor I talked to says, you know, it doesn't matter if you come back negative or not. You need to quarantine your home for two weeks. Uh, we're going to go ahead and test you no matter what, but no matter what you need to stay home because we have lots of false negatives. So that means that even though your test comes back negative, you could still be positive. So I tested, which was awful. <laughs> and then um, I got my paperwork. And when I got my paperwork, it said that not only could you do it to the back of the nose, but you could also swab the inside of your cheek. Now I have not heard that at all. I really couldn't find any information about how they do this test. And then once it happened to me, I was like, you could have swabbed my cheek, but you went to the back of my, <laughs> all the way, right, basically to the back of my throat. Why? You know, <clears throat> I haven't been able to find anything really conclusive about why they go to your nose instead of your cheek when their information says that they're both the same. So I went through all of that. And then after you do that, once you're results come back in, you talk to another doctor. So I talked to another doctor and he said, no, you don't have to quarantine because it came back negative. Um, you can go do whatever you want to do. I was like, okay. But the first guy I talked to said you, that there's a lot of false negatives. And so that's why I have to quarantine even if I'm negative. He's like, well, yeah, we do have a lot of false negatives, but you tested negative. So go ahead. So when this whole, because of this whole coronavirus COVID thing, Nobody really knows what to do about it, it looks like. And so all of these things that they're telling you to do, they'll come and say, this definitely works. And I'll say, no, it doesn't. And this definitely works. And no, it doesn't. And the only thing I've ever seen them say that I know for 100% because it's worked forever since we started doing it is washing your hands with soap and hot water. Don't touch your face. You know, this is stuff that we have been doing forever and ever and ever. And we know for sure it works. So that is what I would say to anybody who's worried about it is just, you know, they're still coming out with information about masks not working. You don't even need them, etc. So I would just wash your hands and keep your hands off your face if you're worried about it. So I was not worried about it because one, if that's what coronavirus is, it's not that bad. It's not fun, but it's not that bad. Um, so that was my coronavirus experience. The doctors gave me two different, you know, things to do. So one doc is like, no, definitely stay home, stay home. Another doc, and this is from the same, you know, place is telling me, no, you don't have to do that. You can go out and do whatever you want because you tested negative. So they don't know guys. And so that's why I'm not surprised that people are confused about what is really going on. Because again, <laughs> our lovely government and our lovely system and everything doesn't know either. And they can't agree on what to do. And they're telling people two different things on the same visit, basically. So have you had that same experience? If you were tested, how would it go for you? I would really like to know if you had like a you know, every doctor that you saw, or if you only saw one doctor told you the same thing, did you get different stories? Um, 
my what ended up happening what ended up what was wrong with me was a lung infection and so because I have asthma I was wearing a mask for like the five minutes I could wear it and then just pulling it right down well that apparently caused my lungs to have that infection because it's the only thing that's really changed that I've been doing um, I don't usually get I don't usually get lung infections that do that to me as an asthmatic, your, your lungs are always struggling to clear out the mucus and everything that's in there. So you always have like a, li- a slight infection. So I always have that one, but never anything this, this, like this, where I can't talk, I can't breathe, things like that. I did eventually end up leaving that job just because when I couldn't talk, I couldn't breathe and everything. It was the, the back and forth with that was like, well, you need to call in every day. I'm just like, I can't talk. I can't breathe. And they're like, you have to stay away for two weeks. I'm like, I'm fine with that. But, <laughs> uh, you know, they're, they go pretty crazy about it in some places. Like even the new job that I have is still like, well, you need to wear a mask. And I'm like, if I wear a mask, it's going to be bad, guys. I'm asthmatic. And the thing is, I live in South Carolina. And even when they place these uh, restrictions on us, the people who have asthma, who have other breathing issues, were exempt from it. But when you go work, excuse me, they're saying, no, you have to wear one. It's the law. It's like, well, it's not for me. I am exempt according to the law. So people are going crazy, even crazier than I would thought that they would go because they're going beyond the law now and just saying, well, you just need to do this because we have people who complain. Like, okay, so now I just wear it on my chin. I don't put it over my nose and my mouth because if I do that, I'm going to have problems that look like coronavirus because I have asthma. (laughs) So when you're looking at maybe some of the numbers, maybe think about that too, because I know there's been a lot of news about how people are skewing the numbers and things like that. And if you're asthmatic or you have other breathing issues and you wear this mask, then you start to have the same symptoms, you know, shortness of breath, trouble breathing. Uh, for me, my body heats up, which makes it worse. And then my, my throat closes down and there is no breathing. <laughs> so I would just encourage you guys that if you see somebody not wearing a mask and you're one of those people who think everybody should wear a mask, maybe you should have, you know, just ask them, Hey, are you asthmatic or whatever? Because people like us who are chronically ill or chronically sick, cannot wear those things without getting even more sick. So that's why typically you have a, um, an exemption from it. So guys, I hope this finds you having a great day just despite all this. <laughs> I hope this was some information you could use, maybe just file it away in your collection of information, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.